The Q1 Gannet is an amazing paper airplane designed by Evan Bruss, and it's inspired by the Lockheed Martin Cormorant. Now, the Cormorant was designed to be an unmanned aerial vehicle that would be housed within the missile tubes of the U.S. Navy's Ohio-class submarines, where it could literally float to the surface before launching into the air. Now, unfortunately, the contract for development was canceled before this ever saw flight, but you can see the amazing geometry of this plane emulated in the paper airplane as well. So let's see this plane in flight, and then Evan will teach you how to fold it. Now, if you haven't already, be sure to check out his YouTube channel, Square Force, where he will teach you a bunch of planes that aren't going to appear on the Foldable Flight channel. So if you are itching for more content from Evan, that is the place to get it. Hey, today let's learn how to fold the Q1 Gannet. You're going to need a square sheet of paper. If you don't have a square sheet, you just have a rectangular sheet. It's very simple to convert into a square. All you have to do is fold it diagonally to match up the edges. And then you're gonna have a little extra strip of paper here. You can just fold or cut along that edge there to just get rid of this extra portion. All right. So the first thing we're gonna do here is just fold our paper over in half right down the middle. And we're going to continue our very basic uh, beginning to this design by folding our corners into that central line. And we're gonna continue to do the same here. Fold it over to the middle crease it down and we're going to keep going to fold this edge now into the center line and I always leave a little bit of a gap on this one just because there are going to be a fair amount of layers of paper going on here I don't want to stress the paper out too much or rip it and so if you can see I do have a little gap there between this edge that I just folded and that central crease and of course we're going to repeat on the other side here try to match the width of that gap straighten everything out somewhat like that now the most important part is do our wings match up so I'm going to fold it together here and I'm actually going to adjust this little triangle in the back so our wings match up a little bit better and that looks much better in terms of having the same dimensions back there all right, so now that you have this arrow shape here, we're actually going to fold this front point all the way to the back here. We're gonna to touch to the back edge of the paper and crease it down. And this is going to be a little thicker crease. It might be a little challenging. You'll see my paper is starting to rumple a little bit there. Not a big deal because we're gonna unfold it right away. Just be aware that's gonna happen. And now we're going to repeat that fold. We're gonna take this point here, but instead of matching it to the back edge, we're actually gonna match it to this section here where these fold points come together. So we're gonna fold it just a little bit further towards the nose of the airplane this time. And once again, kind of a tricky crease. You might have to go over it a few times because there are a lot of layers bunching up there. Things are gonna get a little wrinkly. Don't worry too much about that. All right, and next we are going to flip this paper over or actually fold it in half. So now you can see there are some crease lines here where we just made those folds. If they're not visible for you, go back and try those last two folds again and make sure you crease them down really well. You should have two visible points here and we are actually going to take this edge of the paper here and we're going to fold at those as our guide point. So here's my first crease line that you can see going across here. I'm gonna make a fold from that point where it intersects the edge of the wing here all the way to the back corner. So it's gonna look a little bit like this. And we're going to unfold that and we're gonna repeat the exact same fold with this second crease line right up here. Again, we're going to the back corner just the same way we're just making another line on the paper. There we go. Flip it over and we'll repeat on this side. So we fold to that back corner, 
to that first crease line, sort of in the middle of the paper, and then to that second crease line a little bit further up. And you can use the other wing that you just folded as a way to match. Make sure everything's nice and even on both sides. There we go. Now we're going to unfold the lines that we just made, and we're actually going to take the most recent fold and reverse it. So we're just going to make sure that that fold line there is going the other direction. This isn't a huge deal, but it is going to make the next step a little easier. So if you're keeping track here in the middle here, I have a mountain fold. I have a mountain fold now that I just made because I reversed the crease. And now I have a valley fold. So that should put you on the right track. Okay, we're gonna pinch the layers together here and leave that last crease line there um, folded open. So you can see those are the wings that we're gonna be making here. And now we're actually going to take this line that we just recently reversed and we're gonna use that as a bit of a squash fold here. So push down on the center line and let it fall open along those creases that you just recently reversed. So you should end up with this shape. All right, that is going to become the basis for the three-dimensional structure on the nose of our airplane. Now we're going to unfold that. Now that we've reinforced that line, that's all good. And now we are going to do a fold down through the middle of our airplane. So we keep the back sort of at a mountain fold here, and we're gonna reverse the fold over in the front of the airplane and sink it down underneath the wings. Kind of a more challenging fold. It helps to look at the side while you do this as well, because you can use the edges of the wings as a guide. So I'm gonna take the edge and just follow it all the way down. So it looks like that. Perfect. Now we have a big triangle of paper here. We're gonna squash fold that again up against the body. So we're gonna open up the front of it and just push it in like so until it falls right along the center line of the plane. We're actually gonna make a little bit of a diamond shape here. And then I just like to crease it up along the nose just to make sure everything falls into place. Perfect. Now we're going to slide our thumb inside this pocket that's waiting on the bottom of that diamond shaped piece of paper. We're gonna open up like so, and now we're gonna fold it back so these layers that we just opened up fold all the way open. You'll see it's going to create a horizontal fold right here. Now, when we're done, we crease this down. If we look at it from the top, now it's gonna be more of a hexagon shape. Not a regular hexagon, but it's approximate. All right, making good progress here. We're going to just fold this open here and just place it down. I'm actually going to pop open that three-dimensional structure that we made earlier by following those crease lines. Open that up on the top as well. And now we can flip it over, flatten it down, if you've been following the steps along, you will see our hexagon shape here. Looks like a pentagon if you exclude that part. And now these prongs in the front have separated a little bit. They're not right next to each other. That is absolutely fine. Okay, now we're gonna make a keel to throw the airplane. So we pull this section up here, try to get a mountain fold going right down the middle of that shape. And the way that I measure this is I just pinch in the back here until I bring these edges closer to parallel. So that looks pretty close to parallel right now. 
So I know that that is about how big my keel is going to be. I flatten this down, recrease those edges a little closer to parallel, and just crease down my keel as well. And you should have the little triangle of paper standing up there. While we're here, we're also gonna fold the wings. There is a slight wingtip bend that you're going to make in the back of your wings. So I'm making my reference from here, right where those two layers intersect. Just gonna put a little crease there. And then to make the angle correct, I'm actually going to take this line. You can see where the two colors contrast here, this line right here. I'm gonna put it about midway between the back edge of my wing and this other layer here. So you can experiment with that angle. You might wanna put it further to one side, but I like to put it right in the middle. That gives us a little bit of lift on our wing tips and gives us a little surface to control. And I'll do that on both sides. Once again, right from that corner where these layers intersect and approximately to the middle there on that end. Great. Okay, we're gonna go back to these layers here that we've made underneath our airplane. We're actually going to fold now these triangles at the front. We're gonna fold them down like so, and they are going to be pretty resistant to folding. There's a fair amount of layers there. So just bend them over carefully. We don't wanna to try to rip anything here. This is one of the areas where the paper can get a little bit stressed if you're not careful, so just take it slow. And that looks pretty good. We just have to bend them over and then slide this tab that we just created into the space between these two layers. So we slide it right in there and we'll do the same on the other side. There we go. Now those layers are locked together a little bit. They're not gonna unfold in flight. Now our last step here to create the underside of our airplane is just to fold these edges up a little bit here. I like to go from the corner of the fold that we just made here and just fold them over so they follow the same line as the center line of the aircraft. You don't have to be super exact about it, but you do want that fold to be parallel to the center line of your airplane so you're not introducing any additional drag. Just helps give it a little bit more stability in flight. So right about there. And I like to keep these about a 90 degree angle from the underlying wing surface, but you can play around with that angle and find one that looks right to you. Okay, now we just need to shape our airplane and we are all done. We just use your finger to insert into that front inlet there and maybe recrease those folds a bit. Be careful while you do this because this point up top is very stressed and it will probably start to tear if you're too uh, sort of rough with it. So just be gentle with that paper. And you can adjust the angle to make that inlet as sort of square shaped or as flattened as you want. I find right about here tends to hold its shape really well. If you're going for maximum distance on your flight, squish it down a bit because while this does look like a cool jet intake, it is nothing but drag on the front of your airplane. And now we have our finished Q1. Enjoy flying. Thank you so much to all of my patrons who are supporting this channel and making these videos possible. You can become the pilot of your favorite foldable flight paper airplane and your name will appear next to the paper airplane you choose in each of my YouTube videos. So head over to patreon.com slash foldableflight and join the foldable fleet today.